Welcome, and thank you for taking a moment today to focus in on the things of God. You know, as believers, we all have a responsibility to share the message that God's given us about the hope we have in Jesus Christ. And that's always been the case, even before Jesus was known to people. It's always been our responsibility to let people know that God loves them. Even in the, the time of the prophet Ezekiel, and we're going to look at a passage in Ezekiel chapter 3 today, where God talks to Ezekiel about that responsibility that he had. And it's something that even today we still share. So in Ezekiel chapter 3, we'll start reading in verse 17. And this is God speaking. He says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them this warning from me. When I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil way in order to save their life, that wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person, and they do not turn from their wickedness or from their evil ways, they will die for their sin, but you will have saved yourself. And again, when a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, and I put a stumbling block before them, they will die. Since you did not warn them, they will die for their sin. The righteous things that person did will not be remembered, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the righteous person not to sin, and they do not sin, they will surely live because they took warning, and you will have saved yourself. God was comparing what Ezekiel did to the job of a watchman for the house of Israel. That was a very important job. And that day, it wouldn't be uncommon for an army to walk through the land and look for a kingdom or a town to overthrow. So the watchman was the first line of defense to warn the people to get them ready for the attack. So the figure of speech here is pretty clear. The watchman's duty is to warn the people and the people's duty is to heed the warning. The same thing is true for all of us who witness. We can only witness to people. None of us can make a person repent. That's on them to make that decision. And we're all sinners. We know that. But the difference between a sinner and a lost person is that a lost person is ultimately doomed to an eternity separated from God. Heaven will be full of former sinners, and so will hell. And at that point in eternity, everyone will know the truth. But those who were never saved, it'll be too late for them to respond. And as Christians, we're called to care for those people. The counterpoint to Ezekiel's figure of speech for the Christian is us going out to witness to people about Jesus and the need we have to turn our lives around. And to do that, we have to have the compassion of Jesus who was able to see people as sheep without a shepherd. Our caring is seen in a direct way as a part of the Great Commission we're supposed to go wherever we have to go to make disciples for Christ. Jesus said, even to the uttermost parts of the earth. The Great Commission puts the responsibility of reaching people squarely on the shoulders of those of us who are believers in Christ. We have become, in effect, the watchmen of our society. We have the message that people need to avoid the danger that could be theirs if they would go out into eternity without Christ. In Ezekiel's day, the watchman was going to be guilty of the blood of the people if he failed to warn them of the danger that was coming. The prophets made it clear that if the watchman failed to warn the wicked, that God was going to hold that watchman accountable. And the same principle is actually in the New Testament, to be indifferent about the spiritual needs of other people and to fail to tell them about the gospel is a very serious thing. There's a story of a man who spent many years as a lost person and he finally converted in the later part of his life. And about a month after he'd made his decision, he found out he had a terminal illness. And he felt terrible that he discovered what he knew was such a great treasure at such a late point in his life. And he started to realize that he hadn't really done much with his salvation. And sharing with a friend, the man said, I'm not afraid to die, but must I go empty handed? And hearing that statement, there was a gentleman named Charles Luther who was inspired to write a hymn and it's called, Must I Empty-Handed Go? And a couple of the verses in that hymn say, Must I go and empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty-handed go? Not at death I shrink or falter, for my Savior saves me now. But to meet him empty-handed, 
thought of that now clouds my brow. That's a really haunting message to all of us who are followers of Christ. We're supposed to be the watchmen of our society. So I guess we have to ask ourselves, are we doing our job? Will we go out into eternity empty-handed? The passage in Ezekiel doesn't emphasize any rewards for doing that job, except in verse 21, where it says that the watchman will have saved himself. But in a sense, the reward of leading someone to Christ is the joy of knowing that there's another person who's been saved. And it's always exciting to see those people who've accepted the Lord years later still living faithfully as Christian people. Even though the emphasis here has been the watchmen failing to do their job, it also says that there's a blessing to know that there are people who are coming to Christ. And we can see them grow spiritually as something that is a great blessing for all of us. So we should be working to accept our responsibility as the watchman that God's called us to, to be and leave whatever rewards there may be up to God. And in His time, He will reward us. And we need to understand that. But today we have a job to do. Listen, maybe you're not taking the job of being a watchman responsibly. Today, I want you to understand, it's not listed as a gift of the Spirit to be a witness. It's a command that we have to witness to people. Or maybe today you're hearing the message and you're rejecting the warning that the watchman's giving you. We're going to have prayer together, and I want to challenge you to let God speak to your heart and lead you to that point of salvation or to that point of being committed enough to do what He's called you to do. As the Lord leads you, why not respond right now as we pray? Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of another day. I'm thankful today that you've given us the responsibility, as inadequate as we are, that you allow us to be a part of your kingdom's work. Lord, thank you for letting us do any part of that. And we think of those today who need to hear that message and perhaps are hearing it, but are rejecting it on some level. Lord, we pray for their salvation. Pray that you would open their hearts to receive you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, as we live this day, I pray for the opportunities that you'll give us to reach out to those who need that message. We give you the glory in everything. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.